dear students in the previous video we started the poem the table turn and uh, we finished the first three stanzas and uh, we have five more stanzas which have to be covered from the poem table turn and uh, before going to the fourth stanza and its explanation uh, let me remind you once again what we discussed in the first three uh, stanzas. So in the first stanza, the poet Wordsworth is asking his friend to uh, get up and leave books which are useless and come along with him to enjoy nature. And uh, he even asked uh, to change his attitude or his uh, looks and why Matthew is toiling, why his friend is troubling himself to uh, learn the knowledge from the books. So that is an easy way. So this is what is said by uh, Wordsworth in the first stanza and in the second stanza we see that uh, Wordsworth uh, giving the beauty of nature in the form of sun setting and we even see that uh, uh, sun's beauty or brightness and shininess is spread everywhere on the fields and uh, so because of the sun the evening looks golden so this is what uh, Wordsworth said in the second stanza and in the third stanza we discussed that uh, books create conflict and books create disturbance in the mind but he gave one example of a bird woodland linnet in the third stanza and he said that uh, Wordsworth himself uh, had a good experience with this bird that uh, it gave uh, uh, good music which is sweet on his life and during uh, the troublesome days when he listened to the birds singing and music so it has a great impact on the life of William Wordsworth and he even said that there is much wisdom uh, in this particular birds singing there is more wisdom there is more peace in this particular bird singing remember the bird is woodland linnet and so we finished until here uh, the three stanzas and now uh, let us go to the fourth stanza so here we see the first line and hark how blithe the throstle sings he too is no mean preacher hark hark means listen how blithe the throstle sings blithe means happy or cool the throstle sings he a throstle is a type of bird which we find in UK and so in the previous stanza we already have seen there was one bird that is woodland linnet and in this particular stanza we see one more bird with the name of throstle and so the Wordsworth is saying that uh, it is very cool the throstle sings throstle sings happy happily and it gives happiness to him and Wordsworth is asking his friend to listen to this particular throstle and he too is no mean preacher he here refers to the bird throstle and so the bird is talked as he I already told you about personification so here we see personification 
the bird is talked as he the non human being is treated as human being and so here is personification he too he is also no mean preacher that means he is also equal to preacher and he is more than preacher he is a very good preacher preacher who is preacher preacher is the person who preaches in the church and who influences people in the church and he is a good speaker very good speaker and so here wordsworth is saying that thrussell is a very good preacher he is more than a preacher preaches thrussell singing influences anybody so uh here in these two lines a bird is talked about and that is thrussell and next third line come forth into the light of things let nature be your teacher come forth come forth means come out into the light of things what is the light of things according to wordsworth nature is light and books are of darkness so he is calling his friend to come out into the light of things that is into the nature so come to nature come to the light of things whatever you are learning from the books it is of darkness books are of darkness but nature is the light so according to wordsworth this is what he says and let nature be your teacher so he is asking the friend to let the nature to be his teacher once give chance to nature my dear friend and it can become a good teacher it is a good teacher nature is a good teacher so if the teacher is nature we will be enlightened we will be lightened and there is so much to learn there is much knowledge in nature and there is much wisdom in nature and so if nature is your teacher we can learn lot many things nature is the good preacher nature is the teacher so because it teaches many things it teaches uh, wisdom it teaches lot many things and so this is what he says in the fourth stanza so in fourth stanza we see that uh, uh wordsworth is talking about uh, bird thrussel and uh, he said that uh, this thrussel is a very good teacher and um, he is also saying that uh, uh, come to the light of things that is nature and uh, let nature be your teacher allow nature to be your teacher once so that uh, you can learn a lot many things from nature so this is what he says in the fourth stanza and here also we see that uh, there is a rhyme scheme sings things preacher teacher a b a b and next let us go to the fourth stanza she has a world of ready wealth our minds and hearts to bless she who is she she refers to nature that means here also there is personification she has a world of ready wealth which means that nature is with ready wisdom it is not being prepared or it is not prepared by someone but nature 
has ready wisdom in that it is ever ready books have to be written it takes a lot of time and somebody has to write them but here nature is with ready wealth whenever you go wherever you go so nature is ever ready to uh give you a good wealth ready wealth and next our minds and hearts to bless so uh, nature has a ready wealth ready wisdom uh, which our minds and hearts to bless nature blesses our minds and hearts with ever ready wealth ever ready wisdom next third line spontaneous wisdom breathed by health truth breathed by cheerfulness so the benefits of uh, nature are talked in this particular stanza so what are the benefits so note these four things what are the benefits of nature spontaneous wisdom spontaneous means ever ready wisdom we already have talked in the first line ever ready wisdom breathed by breathed by means along with along with the health and truth breathed by cheerfulness so four things just remember what are the benefits of nature nature gives spontaneous wisdom nature gives health nature is with truth nature gives cheerfulness and so these are the four benefits which we find out of nature and uh, nature blesses our hearts and minds with ever ready wealth so what is the wealth these four things are only the wealth so in this particular stanza we understand uh, some information about uh, uh, what is the benefit or what are the benefits of nature so this is what we find in the fifth stanza next let us go to the next stanza next stanza one impulse from a vernal wood may teach you more of a man one impulse from a vernal wood impulse means motivation or we can understand here a lesson one lesson from a vernal wood vernal wood means it is a tree from spring season so during spring season we find this particular tree and this uh, understand this uh, and remember this name vernal wood may teach you more of man so one lesson from one particular tree may teach you more of man so we think that man is knowledgeable we think that books are only the source of knowledge but here a words with is saying that only one lesson from a vernal wood may teach you more of man one motivation which you learn from a vernal wood is greater than what a man can teach you man here means general teachers man here means books man here means preachers and so if you compare with uh, what the natural man a preacher or teacher or a book can teach you so this teaching of this man is less than the teaching of a uh, vernal wood 
so this is what we find uh, here in this stanza and this vernal wood can also teach of moral evil and of good than all the sages can so morally how to live morally goodness and badness it teaches what is good and what is bad morally and then all the sages can teach sages sages who are sages sages are the very wise persons and so what the very wise persons can teach so this particular one tree can teach you more than a man more than all the sages all the sages means in the whole world how many sages are there so here wordsworth is saying that more than all of them so this particular a tree can teach what is morally good and what is morally evil so you may get doubt that uh, what a tree can teach sir so we can understand that uh, the nature teaches us humanity nature teaches uh, teaches us values how to be helpful how to be humane how to be kind enough so all these things which we can learn from nature especially here wordsworth uh, gave a particular tree name a vernal wood so he says that uh, vernal wood can teach what is morally good and evil and uh, it teaches more than what a man can teach and uh, it teaches more than all the sages can teach all the very uh, wise persons can teach so this is what we find in this particular sixth stanza next let us go to the next stanza sweet is the lore which nature brings our meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous forms of things we murder to dissect first line sweet is the lore which nature brings lore here means wisdom so the wisdom which nature brings is sweet or we can understand that the nature's wisdom is very sweet the fruit of nature is sweet but our meddling intellect meddling means interfering so our meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous form the forms of things so our interfering intellect misshapes the beauteous forms of things so what is these beauteous forms of things this is nothing but nature so our interfering intellect is misshaping the beauteous forms of things that is nature and we murder to dissect dissect means cutting up something to study the internal parts see what words what says here in these uh, three lines in this particular poem in this particular stanza is that our interfering intellect nature is not interfering in our lives nature teaches us many things and we can learn lot many things from nature but nature does not interfere but man's interfering mind is interfering and misshaping the nature and its beauty and it is murdering and cutting we can understand that uh, man is 
in the name of scientific experiments in the name of doing uh, experiments his cutting up of these plants flowers and uh, uh, wood and so on to test and he is uh, cutting to study the internal parts so he has become a murderer who has become a killer of this particular nature see we can understand here in the first uh, line here in this particular stanza that nature is giving a sweet fruit to us but we are damaging nature this is what we can find and next let us go to the next stanza the last stanza enough of science and of art close up those barren leaves this is the important lines for your annotation enough of science and art close up those barren leaves so enough reading science and art what are what are these science and art these are books so theoretical books so enough of them so uh, whatever you have read so far enough just leave them close up those barren leaves so words worth here he is saying that uh, these books of science and art are of barren leaves barren barren means which cannot produce or which is useless so these books are barren which cannot produce anything so which is barren so close up those barren leaves close up those barren pages barren books so there is nothing which can be useful out of books this is what words worth says and so close all those barren leaves close them up enough of science and art and next come forth and bring with you a heart that watches and receives come forth i told you already come out and bring with you a heart that watches and receives so we need a heart what is that heart so heart which changes so we have the title of the poem here the table stern the table stern is nothing but the heart changing so here he says that bring with you a heart that watches and receives we must not have a mind which is fixed fixed that only books are only the source of knowledge and you cannot get knowledge from any different source so we need to have a heart which watches nature and which receives lessons and messages and uh, applies them to our lives from nature so we need to have a heart that watches and receives so don't physically come come along with me to enjoy nature and bring with you a heart which watches observes everything in the nature and receiving the messages and lessons which nature teaches us so like this uh wordsworth talked many things and uh, finally uh, he was able to convince his own friend uh, matthew saying that books are only are not only the source of knowledge but nature is the original source and real source of knowledge and so finally i believe that uh, his friend uh, god changed his heart 
and uh, accepted what Wordsworth has said because Wordsworth was such convincing in expressing many points and uh, was trying to convince his uh, own friend saying that uh, what is the beauty and what is the wisdom uh, and uh, what are the lessons that nature teaches and uh, how much peace and uh, how much knowledge and how much happiness and uh, truth and many things what the nature gives to the human beings and so i think uh, finally um, wordsworth succeeded in i'm sorry wordsworth won in this particular uh, war with his friend a small conflict but finally wordsworth from weaker position he went to the stronger position and so the tables turned so the viewpoints got changed so uh, this is what is the summary of this particular uh, poem and so uh, i have given the explanation um, and so remember uh, don't forget so in the first stanza he called his friend to come out and in the second stanza he uh, described the beauty of the sun and in the third stanza uh, we see that uh, in the third stanza we see that uh, you know uh, there is the bird which is woodland linnet and uh, its music is so sweet and in the fourth stanza we see the bird throstle and uh, it is more than a preacher and uh, uh, uh these two lines are very important those are uh words worth calling his friend to come to the light of things nature is light which uh throws the darkness from uh, books and uh, let nature be your teacher and next in the next stanza we see the uh, benefits which nature provides so four benefits we already discussed wisdom health cheerfulness and truth and next we uh, in the next stanza we see that uh, there is a, a type of wood or tree vernal wood and uh, uh, it teaches also many things what a man cannot and what all the sages cannot so of moral evil and what is good and evil it also can teach morally and this is what we see and in the next stanza we see that uh, uh, nature is uh, causing good to the human beings whereas man is causing evil to the nature and in the last stanza we see that uh, so leave all those science and art books and uh, Uh, those are barren leaves which cannot produce and those are useless things and so come uh, with the heart which receives and watches uh, the nature receives lessons from the nature this is what we find in the uh, whole poem and uh, let me give you a brief analysis out of this uh, so we find that uh, uh, wordsworth is a nature poet and uh, wordsworth is from romantic uh, uh, age and so we see that uh, he is justified in his uh, title nature poet is justified out of this particular poem because uh, we understand that uh, the whole poem of the table stern the whole poem of table stern is about uh, nature only and next uh, uh, we see that uh, there is a personification which is used much so uh, the bird throstle is called as he and woodland linnet is also called as he 
and uh, nature is called as she and uh, so likewise we find uh, uh, all these non-human beings are called with human beings pronouns and so uh, personification which you find and next uh, we find the rhyme scheme of AB and AB in each stanza and uh, that continues until the end of the poem uh, so this is one more point to note and next uh, we find alliteration alliteration in this particular poem alliteration is nothing but uh, repetition of uh, consonant sounds at the starting of the words which are nearby in a particular line so uh, let me give you some examples one or two examples so that you will understand see here toil and trouble to to so immediately in only one particular uh, line we find a repetition of these consonant sounds so this is called as a uh, alliteration and next you can also find here uh, she has a world of ready wealth world wealth wa wa so here also we find uh, alliteration that is uh, two consonant sounds are used uh, one after another in a particular line itself at the starting of the words so this is alliteration and so uh, remember my dear students uh, the summary of this particular poem and remember to uh, write the annotations and questions and when you read annotations and questions you can understand them uh, very easily if you remember the whole summary so uh, bye for now uh, so this is what is about the poem the tables turned